Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to take a look at cellular respiration. So if you look at the diagram that we have in front of us here, um, it's kind of a simplified diagram of what's going on with cellular respiration. So it has the organelle where it takes place. Um, to the left hand side, uh, we have the two things that are needed for cellular respiration to occur. To the right hand side, we have the three things that are produced as a result of cellular respiration. Now before we get into the notes part of the video, I'd like you to turn to page 64 in your composition notebook and we're going to go over the equation for cellular respiration first. Now just like photosynthesis, cellular respiration is a chemical reaction. Um, so there's going to be a word equation and a chemical equation for cellular respiration just like there was for photosynthesis. Um, first thing we're going to do <coughs> is kind of review um, chemical reactions. So a chemical reaction, in a chemical reaction, you start with your reactants, the things that are needed for the chemical reaction to take place, the arrow which indicates that chemical bonds are going to be broken and new bonds are going to be formed, so break apart the reactants, form new bonds to form. Uh, on the right hand side here are products. Okay, So for cellular respiration we're going to have reactants and then our pro products. So we're going to start with our word equation first. Okay. So you need two things for cellular respiration to start. First, we're going to do glucose. So in order for cellular respiration to occur, you need carbohydrates, sugars. In this case, we're looking at glucose. So glucose, the second thing you need for cellular respiration to occur is oxygen. We have our arrow here, indicating that our reactants, our glucose and our oxygen, are going to be broken apart. Uh, rearranged, new chemical bonds will be formed to create our products. So the products made in cellular respiration are carbon dioxide, water, and ATP energy. Okay. So glucose plus oxygen is going to get us carbon dioxide, water, and ATP energy. Now this equation should look very, very familiar to you at this point. So I want you to stop and look at it for a moment. I want you to think of why this equation looks familiar to you. All right, what you should notice is that this equation for cellular respiration is actually the reverse of the equation for photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, you start carbon dioxide plus water, arrow, light over the arrow, get you glucose and oxygen. Here, this is a reverse. We're saying glucose plus oxygen is going to get us carbon dioxide, water, and then ATP energy. So if you know your equation for photosynthesis, <clears throat> all you have to do is flip the equation, don't put light over the arrow, and add ATP energy to the end. So here's why, that's why I told you when we were learning the photosynthesis equation. If you know the photosynthesis equation, you can answer almost any question about photosynthesis and it'll make it easier for the cellular respiration equation. So all you do is flip your photosynthesis equation, get rid of the light, add ATP energy to the end, and you have your equation for cellular respiration. Alright, our balanced chemical equation here. Okay. So we bring the glucose down. So glucose is, remember, our shortcut CHO6126 plus oxygen, which is O2. Don't forget our magic number. Our magic number for photosynthesis was 6. Here, it's still 6. Arrow indicating that these are going to be broken apart and new bonds will be formed. So carbon dioxide is, remember, CO2. And our magic number is 6. Water is H2O and our magic number is 6 and then finally the last thing is ATP energy okay and this is our equation for cellular respiration alright so let's go ahead and do the notes real quick we're not going to do all of them uh, just the first part of the notes so cellular respiration aka aerobic respiration um, so cellular respiration is also known as aerobic respiration because um, the bulk of cellular respiration takes place in the presence of oxygen and the word aerobic uh, means in the presence of oxygen so if you think of like aerobic exercise people who are doing aerobic exercise are using large amounts of 
oxygen. Um, that's why it's also known as aerobic respiration. So cellular and aerobic respiration are almost completely interchangeable. All right, so first, what is cellular respiration? Cellular respiration is a process of breaking down glucose in the presence of oxygen um, to put energy into ATP molecules instead. Um, if you remember photosynthesis, in photosynthesis we trap the sun's energy in the glucose molecule, creating chemical energy that can be used by living things. Here now, when you get a glucose molecule, you break apart the glucose and put the energy into ATP molecules instead. Now the reason for that is it's much more efficient and easier to use the energy when it's stored in ATP molecules and get it out of the energy than it is to uh, use it directly as it is stored in glucose. It's a, it's a lot more difficult to get it out, it takes longer to get it out. So what we do is we break apart the glucose and we put the energy into ATP molecules. They're much more efficient and easier to use. Okay? It's like having, like let's say, something like a big car battery. Let's say you're carrying a big car battery around to um, uh, to use it to power stuff. Well, it's a big thing, you lug it around. But if you have small batteries instead and you're using that to power your electronic devices, it's much more easier, much more efficient uh, that way. Um, so that's kind of how you can compare the ATP to the glucose. So you got this glucose, this big molecule that has lots of energy in it versus these ATP molecules, which are smaller, don't have as much energy, but they're much more efficient to use. Okay? A simplified uh, way to also look at cellular respiration is the process of making energy for the cell and your body to use. So these ATP molecules that uh, store the energy that was once in glucose um, are going to be used to power your chemical reactions and keep your body and your cells alive. Now ATP versus ADP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. What does tri mean? Well, tri means three. Um, so if you look here at the molecule, these are the phosphates. There's one, two, three phosphates on ATP. ADP means adenosine diphosphate. Di means two. So here's one, two. Okay. Um, ATP and ADP are actually the same molecules, but what happens is when we go through cellular respiration, we add another phosphate onto the ADP molecule, and that turns it from ADP into ATP. So let's take a look at this next slide to help us understand. Okay. So this is a really good slide here to show uh, what's going on um, with the ATP versus ADP. So here we have ATP. There's lots of energy stored in this bond right here. When you break this bond, you release lots of energy to power chemical reactions. So here when we create this bond, we have ATP, one, two, three phosphates. When we break the bond to use it for chemical reactions, release the energy, now we have ADP, one, two. Okay, so that's the difference between ATP and ADP. They're actually really the same molecule, just depends on how many phosphates are connected. And the energy right here, this bond, is what's storing the high amount of energy. All right, in what organelle does cellular respiration take place? It's in the mighty mitochondria. So here we have our big, buff, powerful mitochondria um, who is making ATP energy for our cells to use in chemical reactions. All right, what reactants are needed for cellular respiration to take place? Well, think about what you need. That's the best thing. When we did photosynthesis, I said, okay, stop and think, what do plants need to stay alive? Here you're thinking, what do you need to stay alive? Um, so here, glucose. Um, from the foods that we eat, um, that's how we get our glucose. Oxygen, you can't live without oxygen. You can't live without food either. Think about if you go without food. That's called starvation. You can die if you don't eat food. Oxygen, you go too long without breathing, you die. So those are two things that we cannot do without. Both of those are what's needed for cellular respiration to occur. So when you eat food and you uh, breathe in oxygen, the glucose and the oxygen get sent to your mitochondria inside your cells um, for cellular respiration to take place. <coughs> All right, the products that are made at the end of um, cellular respiration, uh, we have carbon dioxide, which you breathe out, water, and ATP energy. So those are the three things that are made at the end of cellular respiration. The equation, okay, um, so with the equation, remember on the left-hand side are the things that you need, on the right-hand side are the things that are made. So you need glucose and oxygen for cellular respiration to take place, 
makes carbon dioxide water and ATP energy. The balanced chemical equation, again, if you know your photosynthesis, you know your cellular respiration, just flip it, take off light, and add ATP energy to the products. All right, we are going to go ahead and stop there. Um, so make sure you go over your equations, make sure you know it, uh, make sure you do your objectives, uh, repeat your equations five times each, um, and see if you can say them without looking at the equations as well.